I've been having a look at what I've got that can put together the booster frame part. The original piece, the hexagonal piece that goes across the top there, those two pieces, were originally made out of pencils, believe it or not. Um, and the rest of it is sort of a little bit of an unknown entity in terms of the assembly of it. These middle sections, these three bars that go across the centre, are described as three bars in the middle of the booster frame having a brick texture which is approximately four bricks high and 13 to 14 bricks wide. And the outer surface of this laminated material is still quite soft. So I thought I'd be able to make up a small chisel piece and knock in some alternating pieces to give that sort of brick effect. But then what I came up with is this. This is some industrial fly screen mesh or that security fly screen mesh stuff. It is basically a fly screen that's made out of a, a much thicker stainless steel wire by comparison. And it has exactly the sort of cross hatch pattern what you need um, to transfer into the metal. And I found by basically just putting it onto a piece like that and, and taping it down uh, to hold it in place, I can then give that a pretty good whack with a hammer and it transfers that pattern directly into the metal. And that gives us those little pieces which has exactly that crosshatch brick sort of pattern that we're looking for. I tried that same technique by using a piece of stainless steel wire and sort of hammering it into the surface and it did give me a nice well-defined line. So I moved on to clustering some together to see if I could get the effect that I'm after and it kind of worked. There was sort of a pattern that was sort of transferred in there but it's nowhere near as deep as what I wanted and it's not as well defined as I would have liked it. That does show promise as an interesting technique for other pieces so I may revisit that idea. But in the end what I found is that it was much easier to use the rods themselves directly and cluster them together and space them out in such a way that they attach directly to a piece that I could put a bevel on and then backfill it with the epoxy putty which holds it in place and once it's cleaned up it gives that nice up and down ridging that we're after. So as I said the bits that go across the top here were generally done with pencils and while I do actually have some pencils which I'd be happy enough to sacrifice for that I do also have some brass pieces which are the correct sort of hexagonal dimensions so I'm thinking it's going to be brass pieces for there. When it comes to these plans, the bumper is probably the most complicated of all the shapes that I have to make up. So like I did with the original backing board, I've started out by enlarging these plans up to the proper size and then cutting them out so that I can transfer them onto the material directly. The difference is, is I need two of each piece. So I'm going to use the spray glue in the same way as I did before. But I'm also going to use that same spray glue to adhere two pieces of board together so that I cut out both parts at the same time. Once I've got that cut out, I can separate those pieces. Do the same thing with the dividing piece. Cut them into the individual pieces that I need. And that will give me this. As I said, it's a pretty complicated shape, but all in all, it's come together quite well. It'll still need some individual touch-ups here and there with some filler, but that'll also be true of all the other individual parts as well. So there we go, that's all the primary components done now. From here what I want to do is tie the larger component pieces into one continuous shell. The small pieces, they're less of an issue, they can be mounted on individually. But as these pieces were made up, the size has sort of crept out a little bit, making the entire thing a little wider than it needs to be. That's partially because some of these areas should share a wall, as opposed to having two individual sides there. So it's the positions like that bit there in the center and some of the bits on the other side here as well that need to be shrunk back down to one wall thickness to make sure that the overall width of it is correct. Once that's done, I'll have to go over all the individual areas that need filler just to make sure that the seams that should be hidden are hidden. And as I said, it's sort of just all tied together properly. The other thing that I have to do is to make up the neutrino wand, which is pretty much gonna be a mini build within itself. But for now, the pack itself is starting to look fairly complete. And while there's still quite a ways to go on finishing the project, I'm pretty happy with it so far. So anyway, guys, that'll be the update for this time. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.